So welcome to Tuesday Night Talk, and we are sharing on our Zoom meeting for tonight, and we'll go until 8 p.m., and it will begin with a wonderful talk by our speaker on heart and head. So it's a very interesting aspect um, about which is dominant and which is powerful, or perhaps both have a role to play in our lives. Do we just listen to the head or we listen to the heart? And so to, we'll learn more as we share together and just listen from um, Mana Singh's experience. Hi, Mana. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the Tuesday talk. Thank you for having me. Now, here. Mana, she is a mother, and she's raised a beautiful daughter with her husband, Arvind, and she's 10 years old now. Yes. Right? Yes. Going on 20, right? Going on 20, exactly. <laughs> and I can't think of a more um, stimulating, humbling, educational vocation than being a parent um, and when to use your heart and when to use your head and how are they unique and what do they offer us on a spiritual journey and Mana has been studying Raj Yoga meditation for four years now so she's applied this to her life and she's going to share with us her life experience so thank you thank you Thank you everyone for coming. <laughs> so yeah, the topic is very interesting. It's my voice is okay, right, Eben? Uh, you might turn it. Can you turn it up a little bit? Uh, let's see. Or okay, maybe, maybe I just raised my volume. No, no. Uh, can everyone hear Mana? Um, maybe Jayesh or Debbie can just put a thumbs up for us, or raise your hand. Yeah, I see Mary Jane with a thumbs up. Great. Okay, good. Thank you, Menakshi, sister. So yeah, this is a very interesting topic, head and heart. And um, I was thinking about it um, and very interesting when I was just thinking what comes to me. Um, and especially when I'm talking about heart over here, um, when I refer to the heart, it's not going to be the organ, the heart, which is pumping blood, but it's the emotions, the feelings, what we talk about. And when I refer to the head, I'm talking about the intellect. And normally, we all like to believe that we are operating either from the head or we are operating from the heart, or we put ourselves in that bucket that, you know, I use my head a lot in a situation or my heart. And um, sometimes we might need to use both, or sometimes uh, one is dominated and dominate than the other. Um, and when we say balancing the head and heart, I'm not sure if there is a formula where you can use 50% of your head and 50% of your heart and say, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Um, it's, it's tough, it's tough. But what I think is um, emotions follow thoughts and thoughts of course are coming from my intellect, right? So emotions, which is the heart, the feeling part, they follow thoughts. Um, how I feel depends upon what I'm thinking. So for example, if I'm thinking about Eben, that Eben is a very sweet, wonderful soul, which she is. Who's Eben? <laughs> Elizabeth's sister, sorry, short form for Eben. Uh, when I think about Elizabeth's sister, and I, I think I have a thought that she's a very sweet and a very loving soul. So my emotions around her are going to be the same. I'm going to have my conversation or my interaction based on those thoughts that she's a loving person, she's a sweet person. So my interaction is also going to be based on that, very harmonious, very peaceful. But if I have a thought that tomorrow I have a meeting at four o'clock and I have to give this presentation and my boss is going to be there and my boss's boss is also going to be there and um, in my past experience, 
um, I know that my boss is not very friendly and, you know, creates problem for me. Now I've created that thought that this meeting is going to be very dreadful and very awful. So now the emotions behind it is going to follow. And the emotions, what I'll create will be of anxiety and of fear. Now, the funny thing about emotions are, as compared to thoughts, thoughts are fleeting. They come and they go and they have a direction. So my thought is that this meeting is going to be threat dreadful and this thought is directed to that um, situation or to that meeting. But the emotion, what I've created around it, which is that it's going to be, um, I'm anxious and fearful, emotions have no boundaries. If you have noticed, emotions have absolutely no boundaries and no direction. They are all over the place. So now that I am sitting for dinner at a dinner table, and that's my favorite time because I'm having meal with my family, and I, by experience, I know this is the best time and I'm looking forward to it. But guess what? I have my two new friends right now, which are anxious and fear. They both accompany me, anxiety and fear both accompany me and they sit with me on the table because they don't know that these emotions should be only and only kept for the meeting, which I'm gonna have at four o'clock. These emotions are only for that meeting. But since there's no boundary for emotions, they are going to be with me till the time that meeting is over. And now when I'm going to have my interaction on the dining table, it's going to come from that space. And that's going to create problem. Because I did not create another thought after creating the thought that the meeting is going to be awful. The most uh, wonderful thing would be if I have the strength, I could, not, I could say, well, okay, in my past experience, whenever I'm sitting with this boss of mine, it's not great, but this time I'm prepared. I've done everything. I've done my part. And if the meeting doesn't go properly, so be it, but I've done my part. That would be maybe another thought which I can replace. Or if I don't have the strength to say that, maybe I can just say, okay, this thought is for the meeting but usually I have a very good time at the dining table. I'm going to go and have dinner with my family and I need, I need happy thoughts. I need to create that environment. Mm -hmm. So I feed myself with happy thoughts, but I don't do that. I skip, I skip all that. And that's where the problem is, right? You might, the other way is that you might feel that emotions, that the thoughts follow emotions. But in my experience, when I think about it, that whether the thoughts are following emotions, for example, you know, I don't know if how many of you have felt that everything is fine, um, uh, job is fine, and we are, um, you know, everything is okay with friends and family. There's nothing major going on. But there are days when you still feel very gloomy and very sad, right? I mean, I've had those days, and um, and there's nothing major which has happened. And then the thoughts come around it. It's like, oh, I don't wanna go for dinner. I don't wanna go and meet my friend. Or it could be, oh, I don't want to exercise. That's my favorite one. I don't want to exercise today. I'm not feeling like it. But if I think about it, if I think a little bit more deeper, I realize that though I feel that there's nothing happened right now, and as I, as I said before, that emotions don't have any boundaries and emotions don't have any time limit, right? It might appear that nothing happened, but if I go, if I look into it and go deeper into it, I'll realize that there is something which happened maybe yesterday or a week back or a year back or maybe a decade back where I'm still carrying those emotions with me and they just come up suddenly because I haven't dealt with it. I haven't faced it. I haven't created any new thought which can help me to tackle those emotions. So I'm carrying those emotions with me throughout. So it might appear that everything is okay, everything is going well, but suddenly I'm feeling this low, suddenly I'm feeling very gloomy. But if you take a minute and just sit with yourself, something or the other usually pops up. I faced that for a very long time. 
Um, I came to US when I was 25 years old and I lived in New York City. So, you know, it was a dream to come and live in New York City. I was married by then. I was working in the fashion industry. And as they say in New York, there are only two industry, the finance or the fashion industry. And I was working with the fashion industry. So good job, great job. Um, and everything was good. But I still had those moments where, you know, just nothing, nothing has happened, nothing extraordinary, but I have that very low, very heavy feeling. And that's where my search began for meditation. And I was like, maybe there is something else which I need to look into, something else which I need to see. And I started my meditation journey with that. But again, here's a catch, because no one tells you that meditation is also a process. In my head, the thought which I had created that, okay, I'll go and I'll do meditation. And, you know, just like a, just with a whip of a, a stick, everything is going to get solved. And I'm going to be enlightened the next moment. And I'm going to be the new female Dalai Lama, which the world is waiting for. So I went with the impression that when I do, when I go for meditation, um, you know, things will change and I will feel good because meditation is supposed to feel, make you feel good. Yes, it does. There's no question about it. But with me, what happened was when I went, I suddenly all these emotions came up to the surface. And later I realized that that was good. That's good because I have to deal with them. That's my cleansing. I need to take care of it. Because if I'm not taking care of those emotions, I'm going to be in this constant loop that my emotions are going to dictate my thought and which I don't want. I want my thought to be powerful which then can, where, where my emotions can then follow my thought. So I started with my, um, with, I started with that. And when I saw all these emotions coming up, all these feelings coming up, and it was, it took me time to tell myself, it's okay, be patient with yourself. That's another mistake which we all make is like, we want to rush through this. Like, I want to, I want to, feel, I don't want these feelings. And I thought I was better when I wasn't doing meditation because I never felt all of this. Small, small stuff came up. Me being, um, uh, I saw myself being jealous. I saw myself being irritated because of small things. I saw myself being frustrated because of small things. And I'm like, I didn't know this about myself at all. And this was hidden somewhere, right? But when this comes up, it's good. It's good cleansing. And you need to peel each and every layer and find what's within. And that's, that's how my journey for meditation started. Um, when, we, when we talk about, um, when we talk about heart, or sorry, when we talk about head, the adjectives what we use for head normally is, um, you know, that this person is a level-headed or what else can we use for head? We say, oh, this person is hot-headed, cool-headed, uh, big-headed. Um, you know, we have these wonderful adjectives. And for intellect, we would say, um, what do we say for intellect? Oh, she has a sharp intellect, a very calculating, evaluating, um, you know, or keeping a score kind of an intellect. And when we are talking about emotions or heart, then we are talking about, oh, she's a very sensitive person or he's a very sensitive person. Or um, we talk about, um, you know, a kind hearted, a, love, a very loving heart. Those are the adjectives what we use normally when we're describing somebody who comes from the head space or from the heart space. And when I came into the meditation, especially Brahma Kumari meditation, because before that I've been into other practices, I've done Vipassana and other meditation before I came into Brahma Kumaris. So when I came here, I learned new words and which were clean and clear intellect, refined intellect. And these were very new words and for heart a very true heart and these adjectives were very interesting. And mm -hmm. I thought about them. It's like clean and clear intellect. 
like I know how to have a clean body, but what do I, what does one mean by having a clean intellect? And when I started thinking and started learning about what does it mean to have a clean intellect, I realized you need certain tools to help first clean your intellect. And those tools could be, uh, for me, the tools are knowing the truth about myself and not the truth what people have been telling me. That seems like, you know, a partial truth or maybe a temporary truth or false truth because it's based on someone else's perception, right? So I have always been listening to people talk about me or situations define me or people define me or tell me who I am. But that, that, that kind of a truth is based on situations and based on people. That's not the truth or my truth or the eternal truth. So then what is it? What is it which is the truth and my eternal truth? And then when I came across these words where I realized that, oh, okay, so I am this eternal being. And the truth is that I am a very loving, very peaceful, very powerful soul and a very pure soul. When I, when I started seeing myself through that lens of a loving, powerful, I mean, just saying the words, just saying those words, bring in the emotion of love and power and peace. It suddenly changes your consciousness. Just, just talking to you right now when I'm saying that, and that's why I'm repeating myself, that just I am that eternal being, full of love, full of purity, full of compassion and kindness. And when I started seeing myself through that lens, then it became very easy to clean myself or clear my intellect. Because then I had to just go back and sit with myself and see what comes up and see if I can, I can view the same situation now with this lens, this new lens which I have. Can I go back and see the same situation or the same people who have hurt me or the same situation which has caused a heartbreak can I see that same situation with this light now? You know, um, normally um, we normally we build a lot of stories around ourselves when we have very limited knowledge or very um, limited perception. Uh, and my favorite one is when I look, when I see my daughter, right? I don't know if you have interacted with kids, your kids or maybe um, your cousins, uh, you know, you'll see them that they are in there, they have a very limited perception about the world, right? They're still, they're still relying on you, they're still growing, they're still looking at the world. Um, so they have very limited perception of what the world is out there. So for example, if I'm taking my daughter to a birthday party and there's a big feast, I know, and she's gonna meet all her friends there and there's gonna be all lovely stuff for her like pizzas and sandwiches, what she likes and pastas um, and cakes and cupcakes and all the goodies. And I know I'm, gonna, I'm going there, I'm driving and I'm taking her there and uh, we'll reach that place in just 15 minutes. And then suddenly she looks out of the window and she sees McDonald's and now she wants French fries and she'll start asking me, mommy, I need French fries. And I'm like, no, just wait, we're just reaching there and you don't know what's in store for you. So just hang in there. And she, of course, might throw a tantrum and say, no, I want French fries right now. And this is what I want. And I'm trying to explain it to her, but she doesn't see what's going to happen ahead, right? What's going to, what she's going to get. And is she, does she want to trade or trade the feast for just some French fries at this moment and spoil her appetite? So she doesn't see that, she doesn't view that but her perception about me is going to be, oh, mommy's bad and mommy doesn't give me anything and mommy doesn't understand me and I wanted this French fries and you know, and all of that, right? So that's, but now, but the way I'm seeing it is, I'm seeing the same situation by zooming out and I'm seeing it by seeing what's going to happen ahead and what's where she is at this point. And that's why I'm able to make that decision for her. 
So the same way, once I know that I am this eternal being, that I am this powerful, loving, pure being, can I go back and see the same circumstances, the same situations, and zoom out and see, is there a different way I can handle this? or a different way I can create uh, stories in my head because we all have stories, right? We all fabricate stories regarding a situation or a, regarding a person. So now can I, can I change that? Can I see it in a different light? And now when I do that, can I free myself from that? Because I have these emotions, small bits and small pieces of me left in those stories. I have left myself some, uh, some little energy here and there I've left because I have not made peace with it. I haven't looked at it, cleared it or cleaned it. So now can I go back with this new lens and, and zoom out in that situation and see, does it really matter? Was there any truth to it? Can I free myself? Can I free the other person whom I'm holding on for such a long time? And then can I free that, those emotions which I've been carrying for such a long time? Can I do that? So it's some, some same example. Again, I bring my daughter you know, in the picture and thank God she's not listening because normally she is listening to these talks. Um, so I'm glad she's not here. But um, um, so the other example, right? When they are playing with plastic toys or with a stick, and um, they get into a fight and that stick is now of great importance to her and to the other kid. And they are having a fight over it. Now I know that she has a backyard full of trees with the same kind of sticks, with the same kind of you know trees and she can take as many sticks as she want. Or she's gonna forget that stick the moment we sit in the car and I have to keep that stick properly for her somewhere in the house. But for her, she has created that emotion, that thought that this is important because again, she's viewing that from a very, very limited vision, right? And the, that's when I step in and I will tell her, look, can you see it? Can you see it in a different way? And sometimes I'm successful and sometimes I'm not. And the same thing is going to happen with us. When we start doing this, when we start cleaning ourselves, cleansing ourselves, clearing ourselves. There are certain situations where we will be able to free ourselves, and that's good. And maybe certain it will take some some situations might take time, and that's okay too. That's okay too, because at least we have started that journey, right? We have started the journey, and when you start seeing the results, that how light you feel, how um, happy you feel, then the next step comes, and the next step comes. And then it becomes very easy when you're in this journey doing that. So um, it so that's that has been that has been my um, that has been my journey meditation uh, efforts which I've been taking. The other the other important fact or the other tool to have a very clean and a clear intellect would be to understand that whatever is happening around me whatever things are happening around me, if I start watching it as a drama, as a movie, that this is, that everybody is over here, they all are playing their part, I'm playing my role, and so is the other person. And this is, this is just a drama which is happening. I don't have to entangle myself. I just have to do my part. And again, when I'm doing my part, I'm wearing that lens of knowing that I'm an eternal being full of love, full of light. And can I then play this part in this drama and play my role accordingly? And when I do that, most of the time, you know, we all get stuck in the past, right? So can I, can I, whenever something has, which has not happened my way, can I say that's happened in the past and now I'm putting a full stop to it and I've understood I've taken my lesson from that and now I'm moving on. So some situations happen which are not in your control and then it's easy to say, okay, I did my best and now full stop, there's nothing much I could do and I'm moving along. 
there are some situations where maybe, you know, um, you do not handle it properly. Like I, I have been in that situation where I haven't handled certain situations properly. I haven't dealt with somebody uh, properly. I've been, you know, not in my best behavior. So in that case, have I learned anything from that? Can I take that? What mostly happens is, in my case at least, I take the emotion from that situation forward, but not the correction from that situation. So what I'm doing is I'm like, okay, I could have, should have, would have done that, maybe this, maybe that, which is absolutely of no use to me at this point. But what is used to me is, okay, something, what I did was wrong. Can I, can I see it in a different way? Can I correct it? What are the steps which I need to correct myself? How can I make sure this doesn't happen next time? So the lesson for me was here, which I have to remind myself, take the correction from the situation and leave the emotion behind and then move on. Mm -hmm. and that will help again to keep, um, you know, keep your intellect very clean and clear. The other thing what's helped me also is just writing down. Um, every day before I sleep, I make sure I have I, whatever I can, I just scan my entire day. I see, um, you know, how what has happened? How did I do my part? Was I, what did I do? Did I, did I do my part really well? Was there any um, place where I could improve myself? What can I carry forward for the next day? Again, the correction, what I can carry for the next day and make peace with myself before I sleep. And then when I, before I sleep, I have these elevated thoughts with myself, really powerful thoughts because thoughts have power in them, right? All the thoughts have power. And so if I create, if I, by the end of the day, if I've gone through everything and I've written down and I've seen, okay, where else, which are the places where I need a little bit more work and which are the places I did very well. And I have this chart for myself and there are times when I'm not writing, but I'm just sitting in meditation and just going, scanning my day, just sitting in silence and just scanning my day and seeing, okay, what, 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 what is it that I need to do? And, um, you know, you, you all must have heard this uh, many times, but during Corona times, especially, I, you know, because life became so fragile and everybody, you know, everybody, anyone whom I knew, knew someone who was facing some or the other problem. So I made sure to tell myself, if this was my last day, do I need to correct something? Do I need to, if, if I sleep and if I don't get up the next morning, is there anything which I need to do before I sleep? So if it is going and just talking to my daughter, because most of my interaction is with my daughter or with my husband, if there is something which I need to correct or to say, then just clean and clear at that point and not linger it on to the next day. It, if it is difficult to confront and talk to them, then just through meditation, just send them those, those wishes, those vibes, just talk to them as if they are present in front of me. And I will just, I would just talk and say, okay, this is what I did. You know, sometimes if my ego comes in between and I don't want to go and tell my husband anything. So then I'm just talking to him uh, through my mind and I am, but I'm making sure that I'm cleared off and it doesn't go the next day. And that kind of also helps. Um, and when, when you start doing that, when you start having a clean and a clear and a refined intellect, you will see your emotions are then, your emotions or your heart is stable. You know, you want your heart to beat at a stable rate. You don't want it to go up and down. So then you realize, you will see that your heart then is stable and beating at the right rate. It doesn't need to go up and down. You won't be oversensitive or very emotional. And your emotions will be in line with those thoughts which you're creating. And that has been really, really useful. Um, while I was just talking to you guys, I just remembered about this writing, writing uh, part of it, right? 
um, how just writing and how just seeing things from a different perspective or from a different lens makes it, um, makes it interesting. So uh, as Elizabeth's sister said, uh, Arvind is, my, uh, is the name of my husband. And he's, he's a very loving, sweet person, sweet soul. But um, he has this habit, uh, or I find his habit, one of this habit of his, slightly bothersome. I used to find this, which was he used to forget things. And um, I always wondered how, how is this even possible? Because he's in the financial sector and you know, um, dealing with big, a big team, uh, dealing with big presentations, and um, you know, the whole how the whole financial sector works. And he surely does a good job because he remembers everything. He remembers when his meetings are. He remembers whom he has to call, what email he has to write. So whether we are having dinner, and at nine o'clock he'll suddenly remember that I have to write this email to this person. Remembers everybody's name, all everything. But when it comes to the house, he won't even remember the second sentence or the first sentence. So as simple as if I have to tell him, Arvind, can you please go in the kitchen and get me a glass of water? So he remembers, go to the kitchen, but get me a glass of water is gone. It's absolutely no remembrance. So he'll go in the kitchen, come back and ask me, okay, what, what did you want? What were you looking for? And I, I can't tell you how much that used to irritate me. And I'm like, how do you remember so many other things? And it's only my stuff which you don't remember. And, uh, you know, that's not being fair. And, you know, the whole emotions behind that, that how is this? Because the intellect tells you that he remembers everything, but why not my stuff, right? Why not the things which I'm asking him to do? And then I'm creating that emotion. Well, then he's not being a partner. And um, I have this vision about marriage. I have this story about how a marriage should be. And, um, you know, and this is what I'm thinking. But um, uh, so all my, all my interaction would be that my follow up uh, questions to him would be from that. And um, we, we devised a lot of ways for him to remember things, right? Like WhatsApp or maybe writing notes here and there, like if he has to go to the market. We tried all of that and nothing worked. So then one day I was just writing it down. Okay, what is it? What is it that it's troubling me? What are the, what are the thoughts I create? And what is it that in the situation, how can I see the situation in a better light? Is, can I take a step back and zoom out and see the situation in a different way? And so when I was writing, okay, what is it that he forgets? He forgets, you know, maybe he forgets um, getting things from the grocery, even if I'm giving him a list, or he forgets to get something from the kitchen if I've asked him to, or he forgets my doctor's appointment, whatever it is. So I was writing it down. And when I kept writing and kept writing, I also realized that he also forgets that if I had had an argument with him two days back, he forgets that. He forgets that I argued with him two days back. He doesn't hold me against that. He forgets that I forgot to put gas in the car when he asked me to do it three times, but he forgot. He doesn't, and he's like, okay, never mind. Yeah, when you go get it done. He will forget if I, he'll forget and forgive both that if I haven't done something properly, if I haven't paid the bills, or if I forgot something really important, which he've asked me to, and he will forget any of the fights or any of the arguments where I was at wrong. He will totally forget that. And for him, the next day is, is just a new day. And then I was like, if I start telling him, please remember these things and you need to remember this. And if I start helping him to create his muscle, of remembering things, then I'm also going to, then I'm surely he's going to remember that we had a fight two days back and he's going to bring that to me and I'm not going to like it. I'm absolutely not going to like it because that's what I do and I don't want two people to do the same thing. So when I started looking at it that way, I realized it's a blessing that he doesn't remember this. And it's just a small trade-off which I have. He doesn't remember, um, 
remember uh, getting me water the other day, just the other day, I had asked him to get something out of the freezer and he forgot. And again, a lesson to me that just I, when I know that he forgets these things and it doesn't take much for me to do, but the trade-off is that he's not holding anything against me because I'm not perfect yet, though I would like to believe that I am, but I know I'm not. So that trade-off is that I am that there is this harmony in house and there's this pleasantry in house and everything is okay and he forgets and it's fine and we get up the next day and we laugh about and that's more important to me. So this zooming out, this zooming out really, really helps. So that was one of these examples which I really had to work on myself to figure out how do I, how do I let go of this feeling that he needs to remember everything what I say and it's okay. It's okay as long as he remembers the important stuff um, and the rest I can deal with that. Um, what else? I had some, another, yeah, about when I, when I was talking about the meditation and, you know, when I started this whole um, cleansing process of mine you know we don't even realize that we have such small things it doesn't have to be something big nothing big has to happen to us it's just that we have created and these stories around us and we are holding those stories and you just have to sit with yourself when you sit in meditation it will take time these things will come up they will come you will and slowly you will deal with them you'll understand how to go about it and it will definitely free you. Um, as I was saying that I was, um, you know, I was in New York and had everything going very well for myself, but there were days when I was very, very, without any reason, used to get very sad. Uh, and then when I started my meditation process um, and when these things started coming up, I realized I had this pattern of just feeling sad for no reason, right? And when, when, again, when I investigated and went further down into my childhood, I realized that um, my, my father, you know, both my parents are again very, had a very good childhood, but something very small like this, he, there was a, um, there was a movie which came out and I think um, it was about this, um, about these princes, I believe in olden times, the princes and the queens, they had these chamber where you can go and sulk and they were called as kop bhavan in Hindi. Um, so a sulking chamber or sulking room, right? And, um, and he had just seen that and he found me sitting in my room, just doing my own thing. And he just said, oh, she's just sulking in her sulking room or in her sulking space. And um, he found it funny. I don't know why, but he found it funny. And then he just happened to tell his friends, whoever came in the house, he happened to tell, oh, you know, I might, might have looked very cute when I was doing that. I was a chubby child, so I might have looked very cute. And then he started telling everyone, oh, you know what, she was sulking uh, and she sulks in that sulking room. And um, so he said that once to his friends. Now he has 20, 30 friends. That story got repeated 30 times and then again 30 times. So what I made, so that's where I was saying that, you know, the truth about ourselves based on other people's perception or other people's knowledge, right? So I, I gave power to that, that sentence of his. And I thought, that's what I am. And that's who I am. I suck. And I, for no apparent reason, um, that that is what I do. And I carried that through through my childhood, through my adult, and way in my 30s is when I realized that no, that's not correct. I then called up my mom and asked her, how was I as a child? And she told me, well, you were a very happy-go-lucky child. But this was just a story which I held on to and it wasn't mm -hmm. necessary. It wasn't absolutely not necessary. And I can free myself right now. I know the truth. I know what it is. And I can let go of that. And then slowly, slowly, when I started working on that and just, you know, just understanding that my father just did that in his own um, innocence without giving that much weight. But I give weight to those thoughts. I give importance to those thoughts. And I know, I know better. I know better of that, right? I know 
much more than that. So now can I go back and free myself from that? Just small things. Um, the other example which comes from my in my head is um, that I had glasses at a very young age and I'm gonna give my age, but 30, 30, 35 years back, you know, very few kids had glasses at that time. Um, and I was one of them and I was bullied because of that. Now again, I carried that, I carried with me and I made this impression that, okay, I, I don't look pretty and I'm, um, you know, I just have the, I had this notion that I'm not beautiful or I'm not pretty. And then when I came to New York and I was working in the fashion industry, um, you can imagine when, you know, especially when the girls, when you use the restroom and the girls are freshening up their makeup or looking at themselves in the mirror, I used to just wash my hand and just run out of that. I didn't want to see myself in the mirror. I didn't want to see and see that because I wasn't seeing what actually is in front of me, but I was going to see all those that, that um, those thoughts or those emotions which I had, which I carried with me, right? Because I had this thought, I had given power to those thoughts that yes, I am not pretty or I'm not beautiful or I look a certain way or I don't look a certain way. Again, it took me a while and I don't even realize when that happened. I think when, when I started doing this meditation process and when I started just, it was just very organically, very organically, I, I realized that now do, none of those things bother me anymore. Now I have a choice whether I want to put a reading class and if I'm okay with that, if I want to have my hair pulled up, if I want to oil my hair or not oil my hair, now it's coming from my choice. I don't have to put on. I don't have to see myself from there. I might have the same physical appearance or the same you know, beauty or no beauty or whatever it is, but now the way I see myself is not through that. I see myself as this very loving person. So now it doesn't matter to me. Now it becomes my choice whether I want to dress myself up or I don't want to dress myself up. I'm very comfortable because I know what my truth is. And I've stopped looking at my truth through other people's eyes or through the situations. And that becomes very, very liberating. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, I can I can go on with my with my examples or with my spiritual journey. Um, Eben, did you have something for me? Did you want me to? Uh, oh, you know, who am I to say? I don't. You're doing great. Um, I know we have another 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, no, I was just talking with Mana the other day. Uh, I talk with Mana ever so here and there when we get a chance. And I just knew she had something special to offer. So, uh, you know, I think you're doing great. This is her first time actually delivering a, a talk. You would never know that, would you? <laughs> and, um, but, you know, since you asked, I, I think it's interesting because you keep saying meditation process as if, there is like an unfolding or steps. Could you maybe specify what that steps has been for you? Um, and then maybe is it something that kind of comes back to itself? Um, because this might be helpful for people who are learning meditation or even those of us who are experienced and have had a meditation practice for some time. Um, because it's nice the realizations you've had and then I love this word zooming out <laughs> this is very nice so it, you've developed some skills and some tools and so how how does that work for you in your meditation what is your process right so the first thing um what I understood is uh, and it took me a while, it really took me a while, um, is to be first gentle with yourself, very gentle with yourself. Um, it's as if I am dealing with myself, um, me the child, like I am my own child and I'm dealing with that. So when I bring that same thing, I, I see how when Meher was born and the way I talked to her, right? Because she did not know much, she was still learning. She was still understanding how the world 
functions around her. And in a certain way, I also, I also did not know the whole meditation thing opened my eyes uh, where I could start seeing myself in a different light. So that's why it first was just being gentle with myself because I have been my biggest critique. I have been there where I have said some very harsh words um, to myself and um, that doesn't take you anywhere. That really doesn't take you anywhere. So just first step would be just gentle with yourself and it is a process. And then the second, uh, the most important for me was that the, the impression what I had carried that meditation will, you know, the moment I go into meditation, the first class I take and that's it, things are going to be perfect or I will, you know, as I said, I, I will know, I will know better. And um, for me, um, yes, I, I liked the process, but I also in at the same time, I had these these barrage of that, like just like flood and trucks and full of emotions come up at the surface for me. Um, and I didn't want to face it. I just wanted to run away from it. I'm like, no, I'm here for meditation and I'm not supposed to feel this joyful self and this happy self and here I'm dealing with all these emotions and what's wrong, maybe I can't, I'm not good for meditation also. And you know, the whole thing. Um, so, Initially, when I did that, the first time I was like, okay, this is not working. I went and spoke to my teacher. And the other thing would be, yes, have a teacher, have a meditation teacher whom you can talk to. Because I can bet most of us have gone through whatever you are going through. So I, when I, and we, we just hesitate, we think, oh no, this is only happening to me, right? I always kept on thinking, no, this only is happening to me. And everybody looks very calm. Everybody has this perfect smile and it's only me who's going through this. But talking to one person, at least one meditation teacher uh, helps because they have, they have the experience. They know what it is. They have also gone through it. Maybe not exactly what you have, but something similar to that. And they will be able to guide you because my first instinct was to run away from this and then put myself at, uh, you know, put my energies at work and do what I was doing because I felt at that point uh, when I'm doing that, I'm away from all this, nothing is coming up. But, uh, but then, uh, you know, as I spoke to the meditation teacher and they told me, no, it's fine. You're doing fine. And this is good. This is happening to you. This is in fact, really good because you will fasten the process you you know and the way they told me and it made sense that you know this is this is how you'll fasten the process because everything is coming now you have to deal with it so don't worry just go with it just see take one step at a time see what comes up first for you and can you look at it and gently talk to yourself and say i understand so if something like um for example if um, I had, I dealt with for a very long time, the feeling of contentment, right? Like, as I was saying, I had everything going around, uh, going well for me, but never had this deep sense of contentment and I couldn't figure out why. So then I said, okay, this is my first main thing. I need to first figure that out, that how do I develop the sense of contentment? And rather than saying that why this is not working for me and why I, I need to have this feeling of contentment, I started writing down what I have, what I have with me, what are uh, in terms of either material mm. things or in terms of just my nature. Okay, fine, I might be, I might get irritated at, uh, at small things, but that at the same time, I am a very helpful person or I am a very kind person. And I then just started writing those things about myself. At first, it might seem odd, right? Because you're writing things about yourself. You're writing, you're looking for good things about yourself. But when you keep writing it, all the things what you have or the achievements which you have uh, either at, as, a, uh, as a student or at your work, um, you know, whatever achievements you've had, but small or big, I mean, who's that, who's going to say that to you? Like, it's your achievement, right? Whatever it is, like me getting up, me leaving India uh, uh, at 25, coming over here, and then again, studying, I studied uh, fashion um, in New York, um, I went to 
Larson School of Design. And I'd already done my MBA in India. I'd already, I was already working in India uh, at a very um, um, good firm, very reputed firm in India. And I was earning money and all that. And now I come back, when I come to US, I had to start again. I had to start my life again, I had to pick up again. And um, I started studying again. And um, I must be the only older so-called person in the class, everybody was, 18, 16, 17, and I was 25, but I'm like, okay, this is what I need to do. So that achievement, like I came, I studied, I got the visa, I um, I got job in really good companies like FAO Shorts and Macy's and Bed Bath. And, you know, I had that those kind of a career. So whatever it is, I kept on writing that about myself, that I had this, I had this. And then while I'm writing, just gratitude towards it because that was missing, that piece was missing, just gratitude, because I was always in this, like, this is missing, I'm not feeling content, I'm not feeling some part is missing. The entire conversation with myself used to be like, this is missing, um, and I'm feeling blue, and I'm feeling gloomy, and I don't know what to do. As I said, my thoughts were dictated by those emotions. And then I decided, no, I'm going to create some powerful thoughts so that my emotions follow those thoughts. And when I started writing, just, just gratitude. And that helped me a lot, just continuously writing like this is what I have and I'm thankful for this. As small as having running water in the kitchen because in India, you know, that's a luxury to have running water or warm water. So I'm over here and I get running water. I can step into the shower and go and have a um, warm bath when I want to. So just as small, uh, small things like this, I started writing and started saying my thank yous to it. And slowly, slowly, I don't even know when, that sense of contentment, that sense of fulfillment started happening because I could see that what all I have achieved, what all I have with me, what all, like how my life is full with these blessings which I have received, which I had no idea because I just took it for granted and I was just focusing on something very small. So that, just writing things down, just writing things down um, kind of helped me to uh, come. And that's my meditation process. Um, whatever I, wherever I'm feeling, um, where, you know, if I have any issue, I always try to find the other side of it, right? The other aspect of it. What can I gain out of this? What is the other side to it? Um, so, um, as I was saying with my husband also that he forgets things and that was creating a problem. So, okay, let me see what is the other way I can see things. So that, that kind of helps me and that has been my process. Mm. I like, um, you know, uh, some of the tools that you've talked about are really useful. One of them, leave the emotion behind. But it, uh, what I heard was it's not that you discredited that motion, emotion, you, you faced it and um, even and on, on a, it. Yes. Yeah. What was, yes. To kind of like, well, where, what do you need? And yeah. to, talk, to talk to yourself like you would to your daughter. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. what is it that you really need? You don't want French fries, do you? <laughs> you don't want that short lived uh you know fulfillment you, right. you want the real thing don't you right exactly and, and then the, the other tool was um to really understand that what is stimulating our emotions or our dispositions or how we see ourselves how we see life is to under is to understand the impact that our thoughts have yes it's an easy concept to grasp and to understand, but when you are able to identify a rooted thought behind the emotion, it's really liberating. And I think this is where I, you get this term zoom out. <laughs> or I'm assuming what you're meaning is getting perspective. Correct. So that the emotion doesn't have a hold on me that I actually see you, meaning I see the emotion and I see the thought. 
Yes. And by being able to have be a witness to this uh, process, you could say, as you've been mentioning, of, uh, and then the meditation allows me to be detached from and to observe the thought process and um, the effect. It's really, and emotions are an effect of our thoughts. That's right. That's and, right. And, and so not to, uh, what I heard also not to take it personally, to talk to yourself, clearing and letting go. Right. And then, and, yes, go ahead, yes. All right. And always keeping some tools, like, I, you know, when I say some tools, like some, when I know if I am going to in that direction, if I am letting emotions take better of me, then certain thoughts, certain tools is what I call that I need to have in my kitty, where when I know that this is my pattern, this is where I'm going to go, because we all have a pattern, right? We all by now know our pattern, that this is how it's going to be. And I'm now going to feel like this. And now I'm going to be in that mood for a long time. And now I have to pick myself up. So I keep some handy um, so-called thoughts for myself, which, which I am able to pick myself when I, when I read it or when I write it. So it's anything, it could be anything which you like, maybe it could be a saying, or it could be um, something uh, someone said, or something, a, a small clip in a movie, whatever it is, or just a music piece which lifts you up, but keep some of those things, some of those tools handy. Uh, you know how when we are, when, when with the child, again, with, uh, with the kids, when you are with kids, and you know, they are having, they're having a tiff or they're having a fight and you don't know how to resolve, you've tried everything. And then you take out candies or you take out chocolates and you give it to them and you can literally distract and diffuse the situation. And then everybody becomes happy because now they have these candies and they have these treats with them. Uh, so that's, that's what you need to have for yourself. You need to have those candies and treats for yourself that when you know you're going in that, again, in that tunnel, um, you just have those candies for yourself, those sweets for yourself, could be a music piece, could be any uh, meditation teacher you want to talk to, or some book which you want to read, or your notes, or anything. And I keep that also with me. Um, what works for me is, of course, when I'm not in a great mood, and if I'm telling myself, okay, I am a very loving person or I am a very peaceful person that might not work at that situation. Um, I need to be realistic also, but if I say, okay, I am just this light, I am just this, this just energy, just this light, maybe that, that sometimes works for me. That sometimes helps me because now I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm shifting my consciousness. Or if I bring up any situation from the past, any situation which was very tough for me, and I've conquered that, I've, I've achieved that, I've gone over it, and um, I, get, I, I bring that and I say, look, I could have, I did that all by myself. This is nothing compared to it. I can do this also. So just those pep talks, those candies, or that sweet you need to have with you so that you can lift yourself in these situations. Yeah, I think also you had mentioned a lovely method, and that was gratitude. Yes, that's my favorite of all. I think I resonate with that a lot. Um, and in fact, it's nourishing, isn't it? It's sorry, no, it's it. Not only it's not just a diversion, like as with sweets, you're actually going to the core of you know what is it that I really need. I I don't really need this anxiousness, this right. or fear or doubt right um, but, and so i love this term you say zooming out to get perspective yeah um, and gratitude also what works is um i haven't done it personally but i saw i heard someone i have my book where i write it but um and i'm i'm going to try this where you can have a gratitude jar right so whatever i'm writing in my book if i convert those um, gratitude in a piece of paper like you know i'm thankful for having hot water or I'm thankful for having a roof on my head um, or um, I mean those are the basic one but just like you know just having a healthy body or just this just this medium this this beautiful medium this this place where I can come and I can talk to people listen to other people just see all the familiar uh, uh, people around me, you know, I see Shashikant uh, Bhai right now with his video on, like just that, all those, you know, 
all those, all, you know, this just this space. This is also so uplifting. When I just write these things, and you can just put them in your in your gratitude jar. So whenever you're feeling a little low, then you can use that as your candy jar and pick it up and read one of them to yourself. Read it loudly to yourself, and that surely is going to bring you out of it. That becomes your candy jar. The gratitude jar is your candy jar. What a lovely idea! I think we all should do that. Don't you think, Shashi Kantai? Do you think we should make ourselves a candy jar of these gratitude thoughts, and or even maybe a saying or or a truth that you really resonate with, and um, pull it out of the jar, maybe in the morning. Yeah, I can't hear you, Shashi Khan. Can you unmute yourself? Oh, I see. I One minute, I have to enable you to unmute yourself. Okay, good. now you can unmute yourself. Uh, he's talking, but he can't hear me, I think. Yes, now, okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is Mana. Your voice is wonderful. I should not say that. But your voice is wonderful, reaching to you know, from heart to head. Thank you. And thank you for that. And candy, yes, candy always. Gratefulness is in everything. The pain I really know. I'm grateful to this pain that it helped me to write my thoughts on paper. So <laughs> each and and my granddaughter, she makes me happy early morning when she meets me. That is really pain. So so, so, so he, she is just hi. here. Say hi. Hello. Say hi. Say hi. Hi. Yeah. yeah. You heard my voice. <laughs> so, yeah, thank uh, you. Yes, these are the candies. I will not say candies. Candies is a little bit or something, you know, to satisfy you yourself. But it is from your heart. It comes. That's what I believe. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and this would be a time where we can share, um, you know, this wonderful stimulating topic of heart and head. Um, what insights did you gain or perhaps even a question to gain, gain more clarity from uh, Mana's experience and sharing? So um, you're welcome to have a question in the chat or or you can unmute yourself. Um, anyone like to share? Sukanya, would you like to share? I loved when, uh, when uh, oh, just oh, a second. Yeah, yeah. She has to unmute, uh, I think. Anyone else while she fixes her, adjusts the, sound there. Um, Madhur or uh, Rosie, any insights that you'd like to share from this? This is a, you know, when do we get this chance to share with, within a group and just share our, our insights? Yes, Madhur? Yeah, hi, Sister Elizabeth. Uh, uh, it was really nice listening to Manaben and her experiences. Uh, we both are from the same city, actually, grew up in the same city in India. And it is very nice to hear her experiences. And I could, um, I could actually relate to the way she spoke about, um, you know, issues with kids and how we deal with them and how we mature as we uh, learn to meditate and, you know, how we handle things differently. So um, I could relate to it. So I really enjoyed your talk. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Thank you, Mathur. And then we also have uh, Sister Kyoko and Sister Sukanya with us. And they... Uh, yeah. yeah I, I really loved when uh, uh, Mana mentioned that you leave the emotion behind and you take yourself forward with the learning. That's such a success mantra in our life. We all should take a note of it because we keep carrying the emotion with us, emotion of the situation. And then it doesn't do any good, doesn't do much good to us. But if we carry the learning, then mm -hmm. we become a better person. So that was wonderful. 
and of course love i always love when mana mentions the gratitude mm -hmm. that grateful for every little thing that i have that is that is so good so as i was saying thank you sukanya sister and as i was saying you always have to have a meditation teacher a person whom you can go to when you are you know when you are dealing with things and for me it has always been the center so sister sukanya sister kyokos elizabeth sister like i just come running to them and i and it's so easy to be vulnerable in front of them and uh to tell them what's going on and so lovingly i mean they treat me the way i treat meher and with so much respect and love they will guide me and they have been such a source of energy for me and just thank you thank you so much i think uh, we are fortunate to have each other really whether we are in the teacher role or student role we all supporting each other so that's wonderful that um you what what you share today so thank you <laughs> and we keep exchanging those roles right sometimes yeah. we are in the teacher role sometimes we are in the learning learning role learning mode yeah that's just you being humble but okay taken <laughs> taken <laughs> you see rosy rosy sister hello yes hello om shanti um uh, today i hear one sister mention that the most important people in our life is the people who um they are mean to us you know um like a negative people <laughs> and who do a lot of things that hurt and we can have this opportunity to build a very good muscle of spirituality and resilience when we we make uh our response different different a way of response to this person because we we can be more flex, flexible we can be more um loving caring but to us and i was when i was here hearing you uh i was thinking that, that the main person in my life that can tease me is is myself <laughs> and, and i i love all the wonderful things that you do to yourself to to increase your own uh loving way to to treat you and the way that you find um this touch with you with uh, sweetness so caring and you if you can um uh uh domain domain uh your your personality the one who is unstable <laughs> sorry because i i i need to choose the english words yeah and if you domain that you can domain conquer the world and thank you for sharing all these beautiful examples of your life thank you thank you, thank you rosie all the way from tijuana oh nice she's an attorney there and she's also running a center a meditation center there so i'm so glad that you joined us oh how nice thank you yeah thank you and of course our sisters from san francisco i think we have anuja sister hi anuja yeah anuja did you want to share yeah om shanti sisters yeah definitely uh, it was such a lovely talk and thanks for sharing the link at the right time uh, sister elizabeth i really enjoyed that thanks mana sister so i have a very quick question like you also mentioned about meher uh, your daughter right so uh, like i'm divorced and my daughter comes uh, alternate weekends to me so i sometimes feel that i become too attached in grooming her in the sense that because uh, she lives with her dad and, and her new mom which is a very different life which she leads and uh, here i give her the basically the i would say capsules of spirituality uh, vegetarian diet so many things right and then even uh, household chores 
totally contrast life she lives with me on those weekends right so so it's very i know it's sometimes become difficult for her also and i also become i would say attached in the sense that i have very limited time with her so how do i strike a balance between uh giving her the right uh, kind of amount of dose of spirituality versus uh letting shib baba take care of her keeping her under uh, her canopy of protection and basically not trying to enforce my opinions on her so so that's the struggle i have sometimes because we also end up in a mini argument of course we handle it nicely but still it happens once in a while right yeah yeah so um i mean you first you said it right like you bring shiv baba and you talk to him and say that she's going to be in your canopy i mean that would be the first thing to go about right and also if you go back into your childhood and you think about like i'll give you my example my mother was also very she had the spiritual effect on me and my father was completely different personality right and my mother tried to you know continuously feed me give say yeah. something or the other a co- continuous talk so at that point maybe i did not accept it or i was just listen and let go of it and i'm like okay whatever she's just going to say something mm-hmm. but believe me because you are practicing mm-hmm. because you are also leading that yes whether she hears whether she imbibes it at that point i don't know how old she is if she's young right the right. child old yeah at that age as it is it's difficult right but i'm telling you just by my own experience she has heard each and everything and she's watching each and everything of yours my mother was like this um she was a vegetarian my father wasn't and um um i used to eat meat but i saw my mom and my mom gently used to tell me about you know the advantage of having vegetarian having a vegetarian meal or my father was very so called uh, very um the way he used to handle the world uh, uh, you know like everybody's out to get you so you have to be prepared and you have to be little aggressive and that kind yeah. of personality and my mother was one of those gentle ones right yeah. so i had that in my house as well but um and as a child you're seeing both but you might not i i don't think i ever told her that i appreciate you telling me this i never uh, or gave her any signal that i'm listening to her but oh. consciously i was listening to each and everything what she said because she was doing what she was telling me i could see her do it so that stayed with me and when you know when we have all these teenage phase we experiment so i experimented i did that one but when i came out of it my mother's voice always was ringing in my ears and and what i am or my journey is because of her so it somewhere it is there somewhere your daughter is listening to you yes. because you are playing that part you are yourself in that journey she sees you also making that change so you carry on what you're doing just gently i know sometimes we want to like give them everything at one time like okay listen to this 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 and this but it's okay it's okay first be gentle on yourself yeah. and yes shiv baba is there you are taking blessings she's under your canopy you practice she is watching you she is listening to you she might at 12 she might not be able to tell you look yeah. i'm talking to you look i understand but i'm telling you wait come back to me after 5 or 6 years she okay. will be talking whatever you have told her that oh wow sure that. i have goosebumps right now so many thanks <laughs> sister mana when i i i see little changes in her already and speaking or hearing it from you actually reinforces it further no it is same thing with my daughter my husband has a different opinion i have a different opinion uh, we both have are giving her different you know things and i don't stop my husband to say what he has to say so i let it because the moment, moment there's a conflict then the child is very smart they will use that against you right they'll use that so i let my husband have his say whether i agree to him or not i don't and then i talk to her and i know that she comes back at the night and she wants to hear my part she wants to hear yeah. what my take is on it mm-hmm. so you know you, you being her mother you already have that you already have that influence so yeah. don't worry about it thank you so many thanks they yeah. really feel right thank you anu, anuja just a just a uh, few observations that we had about meher mana's daughter here mm-hmm. she will be playing around with other kids 
and we we think that she's not listening and we are having a conversation we are having a discussion spiritual discussion and after few days we hear from mana that uh, she was explaining to her dad that dad you know what it is like this it is like that very very ta- tactically not directly she is so smart children are so smart so they are listening they are absorbing what is going on so nice so, thanks thanks yeah. for making me feel like that thanks sister elizabeth for giving me this platform <laughs> oh it's what we do and also uh christine had put in the chat she says i love that you were able to step back with your husband and away from the thought that his forgetfulness forgetfulness was personal or a lack of care for you so to drop ego and come from another perspective so much love she says she really related to that experience and that's very very uh, powerful it you know it's it's the simple things you know you can think oh wow these b- big things when we can uh, overcome sometimes those are easier mm. but is these repetitive little nagging things that we've had since childhood probably right and when we can overcome them but of course it's a peaceful process as you mentioned to sit with it, it you you have to isn't it at least that's what i'm hearing yes and and leave let it go but of course we have to face it right and then yeah don't attach yourself to it right so would anyone else like to share yes yeah, shashi kan's raising his finger yes oh, here uh, yes husband and wife i can understand <laughs> it is little bit ego must be there but what about child psychology what child must be feeling at that time mm-hmm. when mother wants to you know i will not say preach but mother wants daughter to understand her or father wants to understand his way must be a quite different way of to so where child's upbringing and education must be yes i feel it is affecting the way mhm so balance and incorporating and regarding everyone's part would you say uh yeah and it should not happen this should not happen if any day differences they should sit aside and they discuss and in front of children we should not expose our thought which are whether it is vegetarian or yeah 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 or culture or non culture it is really really yeah pain. yeah when i hear all these thing it's pain the anuja's anuja's way of you know feelings as a mother mother is mother always mm-hmm. thank you it should thank not be there what i feel from bottom of my heart mm. thank you so much yes dear uh, anyone else like to share or even put in the chat um oh oh another uh uh christine is also saying one day you will also hear the words i heard when my daughter grew up she said thank you mom I didn't realize how hard you worked to make our lives so comfortable until I had to do it for all myself. That is so true. That is so so that is just perfect. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think it's interesting how Beautifully she said it so beautifully. Yes, that is true. Yeah. We never know how our lives touch others, do we? No. you just yeah you just do your part you just do your part i mean i i did the same i did the same i remember um you know just giving birth to meher was such an experience that i i think i cried that night and just saying thank you to her that she even that she had to go through the entire process and it started from there like my gratitude started from there that oh my god that you did this and not once we are two sisters so she did it the second time i'm like why wasn't the first experience enough for you like you know just just immense gratitude yeah 
Well, so um, if anyone else like to um, share their insights from tonight or a question, um, would you like to guide us, Mana, with a meditation to finish the evening? Okay. Yeah, okay. Um. Okay. For a moment, just sit back and just relax. And just deep breath in and out. And bring your entire attention to the center of the forehead. Just gently remind yourself that you are this eternal being. You are a very loving, a very powerful, a very kind-hearted and a very pure being. And that is my truth, your truth and everyone's truth. Everything else is just an impression from past experiences, from people's experiences or from people's viewpoint. But now I know that I am a very loving, a very peaceful being. And with this knowledge, with this understanding, can I take a step back and see a situation which has been bothering me or a person which has been bothering me? And can I bring this energy into that situation and change it? Can I see something else which was hidden now that my vision is broader, my perspective is larger? Can I see that in a different light? And can I release the emotions which I have with that situation and with that person? and come back to this, this sense of my truth, the truth that I am a loving person and a beautiful, powerful. And I'm in this process, in this journey, and very gently, very slowly, I will be able to release myself, release all the emotions which I have been carrying with me for so much time. Just be gentle with yourself. Om Shanti. Thank you. Om Shanti. Thank you so much, Mana. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank uh, you.